So in today's video, I want to talk to you about spell casting. And I've noticed um, over the last few months, as the energies are getting more um, into the fall, but I've also noticed in 2020, um, because the veils are getting thinner and thinner just on earth because of the um, cycle that we're going through, that we are constantly casting spells unconsciously. I've noticed how powerful um, words are and speech and even things that I'm writing. So we have to be really careful in these times that we're in. And so I want to go over exactly what spell casting is and how to create the most powerful spells. So before I go into spell casting and exactly what it is and how it's become distorted, I need to go over where we are in some type of separation right now. And I spoke um, about this on Patreon. And I, um, I'm going to insert a diagram after I talk about this. And I would encourage you to like take a snapshot of it. Um, so when you are in a certain situation and you have a choice to go to the leader level and not the victim level. So that's where there's a separation happening on earth right now. There's going to be the people who are going to stay in victimhood kind of bubble consciousness. And then there's are the people that are evolving and going into the leadership bubble. And so when we are presented with a situation and we have a choice point, we need to consciously decide which one we are going to go into. Now, by default, it seems in um, humans, we go to victim. It's just a default. We immediately go there. And I do too. Um, I'm getting better and better of going, oh, I just defaulted into, <laughs> into that consciousness. And so you have to recognize that you defaulted into that reaction of the situation or the choice you need to make. And then... Um, change that mentality and go into the other, um, what I call like the leader chip or leader bubble that we're going into. So there will be a separation going on and you can kind of see it in the collective. Um, there's people that are like taking charge and making good decisions and everything. And then there's others that are just kind of staying in that victim um, bubble. And so we're, we're separating right now. And so I can really see it playing out on the world stage, but also in my own life. Okay, so let me explain what these two bubbles are. So there's the victim bubble. Okay, so I might have to look because I've made a lot of notes. So, but I will put this on the screen so you guys have like um, explanation. And so you can evaluate when you are in one of these bubbles. Okay, so the victim consciousness bubble is um, external. You let everything externally affect you. Um, the leadership bubble is, it's an internal, that it's your internal um, thoughts and feelings um, help dictate where you uh, will go next or what decisions you are going to make. Uh, the victim lets the outside decide for them. Um, the victim gives away their power. The leadership holds on to that power, knows their, but, but not in an oppressive way. It, it stands in their power. Victim mentality has negative intentions, usually wishing others to fall or fail, um, you know, destruction, things like that. The leadership bubble has more positive intentions for change, um, for the better and wants what's best for this planet, for other people, for themselves. And they do it in a constructive way, not destructive like in the victim mentality. The victim mentality um, is complacent. There's not a lot of um, motivation to do anything. You, you become kind of codependent and want others to do things for you, take care of you, things like that. The leadership is very action-oriented. They see what needs to be done and they do it. Um, 
and I've had to do this too, even when I'm exhausted, um, I know that I have to keep going forward and keep taking action. And leadership people are very independent. They're not codependent on others to take care of them or make decisions for them. They take initiative. The victim consciousness, they have no boundaries. And I've talked about this so much in the spiritual community. There's no boundaries. Leadership people have boundaries. Um, that doesn't mean that they're cold, but it just knows that when they are being encroached upon and their boundaries are being crossed. When you have no boundaries, you let everything affect you. Um, and you don't know when to say no. You're kind of a people pleaser type of personality. Victim mentality is very lack. Like there's just, their prosperity is really low. They lack the things they want. Financially, they're usually lacking. The leadership, there's more prosperity. Um, they work for what they want. Um, they usually have more money incoming. And we agreed here on this planet, you know, that money is going to be our source of showing appreciation or showing, um, I'm willing to give you this for that. There's an equal exchange in everything in the universe. It's a law. So money is part of it. Um, the victim mentality too is very overly empathic. You feel like you need to save the world, that you know everything and you know what's right and, and all that. That's very victim consciousness, that savior type of mentality. It's also the oppressor and the narcissist is a victim mentality. It's someone that has a um, fear that they will lose their um, power that that they feel that they're lacking in some way inside so they um, make others feel less than so it, it's the same victim um, overly empathic people are victim mentality just like narcissists and oppressors are there's a reason they're oppressing is because they they're feeling weak and lacking something inside leaders um, don't do that they advocate for others they um, inspire others. They don't put them down. They um, are really good coaches to other people to try to lift them up and inspire them. Victim mentality is very drama. It's a lot of tantrums. It's a lot of stomping your feet, throwing things um, to get your way. It's very, very drama. Leaders, there's no drama. They are very, um, this is what needs to be done and this is what we are going to do. Um, our default is to go right into drama and victimhood and um, the overly emotional and everything like that. So, so people who have leadership, they have control over their emotions um, that they can still get angry and sad and all that, but they don't project it onto other people. They don't destroy the things around them. In victimhood, when those feelings come up, um, they immediately want to destroy everything around them and um, express their emotions in a dramatic, immature way. Um, victim mentality a lot lives in the past or they live in the f hopes of the future. And um, so they keep going on about what happened to them in the past. What happened to us in the past in our childhood, that was our initiation into this world. When you get to adulthood, you have to start taking responsibility for how your life is going and the choices. Um, but victim mentalities love to live in the past and just keep talking about the past and what happened to them and uh, poor me and all that. And Or they're just living for the future and waiting for somebody to come save them or it's going to get better in the future. Um, and, and leaders live right in the present. They look back and say, I've learned from that. Um, the yes, that happened to me, but that's no longer um, the situation. That's not who I am anymore. They take things as they're happening. Um, they're not waiting for something that's coming in the future. They take care of everything that's right in front of them right now, knowing that the next steps will then show up. They have control over the future. Victim is they feel like they're at the mercy of the future and things like that. Okay, so that kind of covers that. So what does this have to do with spell casting? It has a lot to do with spell casting. So the most powerful spell that you can do is on yourself. 
And this is why um, it's called spell casting. It's a spell. It's spelling. It's words. It's writing. Um, so I've noticed it's even more powerful now. Um, this It's really, like I've said, the veils have really thinned in 2020. But in October, it's even thinner. So be very careful of how you speak about yourself. Be very careful what you write in emails about yourself. And I will say this to people who I have sessions with, and I will bring that out to them, how they communicate to me. Um, I'm pretty open and pretty brutally honest with people and let them know they're in victim consciousness by the way that they even um, wrote to me or the way they're speaking to me on the phone. And that they have the power to switch that. If they don't, they will keep drawing in more of that energy. They will stay in lack. They won't get to prosperity, which is what most people want. Um, they won't feel any happiness because they are always talking about how they've been victimized in the past. So a lot of them living in the past. So be very careful how you talk about yourself. Be very careful how you communicate. You are that powerful of a person that what you speak is what you're creating. So ask yourself what you want to create. So um, I'm a big advocate of rituals when I do have an intention that I want to change, but I always have to do it with myself. Um, that's why I'm an advocate of mantra. Mantra, they're words. And the words that you speak during these mantras have been said millions and millions of times. And so they're extremely powerful. And that is something that I offer to people based on their birth dates. You get a personal mantra. And so it does something internally to you. And it will bring up things in you. And it's, I think it's one of the most powerful things um, that you can do. Because it's words you're speaking. And if you're interested in that, I'll put a link below. The most powerful rituals are when you have the intention or when you're asking the universe to conspire with you to, pr to produce something. It's always best not to be too specific. You ask what is best for earth, what is best for myself and everyone involved in this situation. And then allow the universe to do what it needs to do. Things that are happening in your life currently is from choices that you've made because you are in a certain consciousness. So I always have to ask myself, why, what did I do to cause that to happen in my life? Um, the most powerful shamans and witches take self-responsibility for everything that's happening in their life. They're choosing to interact with certain people. They're choosing to be in certain environments. They're choosing to do certain actions. The universe knows better than we do how to work the situation. So. Everybody gets their lesson. Um, if there's thing, people or situations that need to be eliminated, that will happen. But it's not something that you're making the decisions. You're handing that over. There's this trust there. And sometimes you're going to lose people. Um, sometimes it's going to be painful. Sometimes you will um, have to change jobs or move locations. But you are working with the universe and you know that. And when those things happen, you have to be very careful not to go into victim mentality and be like, why is this happening to me? It's you asked for it. That was your ritual. So you have to know that you are constantly working with the universe. And so if you're in victim mentality, the universe is going to go, oh, well, they want to experience all of this victimhood. So let's give more of it. Okay, so then next, after trusting that the universe is conspiring with you for the best outcome, is you have to detach from the outcome. You have to release any fear of anything that might happen because you know it's going to happen for the best of everybody involved. You have to let go and detach from obsessing over it. Once you put it out there, you have to detach and let it do its thing. If you're obsessing over it, you're not ever releasing the spell. So you have to detach. And you have to kind of forget about it. Don't sit there and wait for it to happen because again, that's attaching and that energy is, is, it can't leave and it can't go do what it needs to do. So you have to detach. Another thing you have to do is you have to do this um, not from your ego. 
So when you um, hear of people hexing or getting revenge, you know, through spells or whatever, that's very ego driven. And those types of spells are very weak and fragile and they will just kind of putter and pitter out. I was told this in 2016 that the energies will no longer support any spells that involve like revenge or hexing or anything like that. Um, actually, it will just kind of stick with you um, because it's ego based and we're supposed to be evolving. And so it's kind of like they put in this mandate, like no more of that. We, we won't, um, it won't be supported is what I was told. But, but hexing and revenge spells and all that, that comes from um, an unhealed aspect of yourself. It's very victim mentality that you want to get revenge or hex somebody else. It, it, it is, um, shows an immaturity. So those aren't going to work anymore. So everything has to be um, coming from a place where you need to evolve. It's no longer supported where you're going to try to manipulate other people to accommodate the life you want. Um, you have to do the changes. You have to do the spell on yourself to manifest the life you want. Again, when you are manipulating the outside world to accommodate you, that's victim mentality. Um, everything in the leadership mentality comes from within and, and knowing that you are the spellcaster of your own life. And, and we just need to keep it easy. Like the more tools and crystals and, and, and all that, um, the more complicated it is. The universe likes it very simple. And so I, my two tools I use the most, um, actually three, but I won't do a ritual without a candle. I use a simple beeswax natural candle. Um, if I don't have anything else, that's enough for me. But I always do burn some type of incense. Sometimes I'll ring a little bell. But that's all I use. Very powerful spells. Also, you, your vessel, has to be really clean and pure. So um, taking plant medicine and intoxicants and all that, that's not going to help your spell. It's actually going to hinder it. You have to, your body has to be healthy for these spells and this energy um, to be able to push those out into the universe and work in tandem with the universe. I've said this before, um, you have to have an alkaline body. So whatever that means to you, look that up and, and that is the most powerful thing that I've done to be able to work with energy. Um, part of spell casting is you have to be ethical and be authentic and stay out of your ego that will keep you from doing these things that will harm yourself. Um, also living like this spell casting, sorceress, witchy life is you have to um, be aware of your environment. Try to control your environment. If you're in a toxic situation, get yourself out of it. Go into the leadership bubble, not the victim bubble and say, I can't, I'm stuck here. Think of a way to change the situation. And it's with you, not with the other person. So control the people you're around, the environment you're around. If you need to move locations, if you need to change jobs, everything needs to be uh, in alignment with you. You know, you're going to have to remove yourself um, from these situations. And that takes a lot of courage and a lot of bravery sometimes. Be very aware of social media exposure and television and all that. Um, know that that is people trying to influence you. They're most likely in a victim mentality and they're trying to control the outside world. That includes you. They're trying to cast spells on you. People, sorcerers and spellcasters, um, know that solitude is important. I've talked about on Patreon when I do my utisetas, go as sitting out in nature. That's really how you can develop relationships with these other entities that will help you um, and the energies and, and the universe working together. It's a relationship you're trying to develop. And I've talked about this too, spell casters and all that. We have really good boundaries. I didn't used to in the past and that's why I would get into a lot of 
situations where I didn't understand what was happening is because I had really poor boundaries. So you need to have really good boundaries. I have a boundary ritual um, and I show a talisman that you can wear or carry with you to help with your boundaries. Spellcasters and sorcerers and witches and shaman, we're constantly taking action. We are not complacent. We know when things, something needs to be changed, we take some type of action. We don't wait for something outside of ourselves to take the action. And so again, like I said previously, I don't co-sign on people's victimhood. Um, that is not, um, you know, a lot of people contact me and want to, you know, ask about witchcraft and shamanism and everything like that. Witchcraft does not co-sign or condone victimhood. Shamans is not victimhood. And so people that come to me, I'm not going to co-sign on that. And I'll tell you another thing in regards to that is if you want to actually meet spirit guides or your fetch or anything like that, um, they're not in a vibration of victimhood. So you will not be able to make that connection. The only connections you will make um, are connections with lower vibrational beings. Um, so you have to... Um, get out of victimhood because it is a lower vibration. So if you can get into the leadership higher vibration, you're getting closer to those spirit guides and your fetch and everything that's living in that dimension. You don't want to be in victimhood dimension because that's when you will create um, beings to interact with you. Um, and it's not as easy. Sometimes people wake up because of those interactions and, and can get themselves out of victimhood because they don't want to experience those things. Um, so again, I don't condone it and I see other beings that I deal with, they're very powerful, they will not condone victimhood either. These beings that I deal with do not come and save me. It's incredibly disempowering. So I do that same um, act for the people that I do have sessions with. And so another thing I've also learned is when I do do a ritual and I have that intention and I speak um, about what I want to change in my life, again, we're not trying to manipulate and change other people, but um, you, you speak about what changes that, that you would like to happen in your life how um, to get guidance on how to do that. It's always about the change within you and how can you contribute or what are the things that you can do. And you will get signs and coincidences and things like that. The path will be shown to you, but again, it has to come from a very authentic, ethical place. So when you have done that and, and you've asked for that guidance and everything, I've noticed that if you don't speak about it to anybody else, you don't talk about it. Um, again, this is part of the detachment um, aspect of spell casting, is you don't um, broadcast what you just did. I never talk about the magic or um, actual spells that I have done. I will show people how to do them, but I don't talk about what I've done. Um, I can talk about it after they've manifested, and I will guide people and let them know this is what I did and it manifested for me. So after it happens, you can talk about it. But as it's being worked on, I don't talk about it. I'm very silent and quiet about it. So another um, aspect of spell casting and witchcraft and shamanism is the aspect of sacrifice. Now, I'm not talking about animal sacrificing and um, blood and all that kind of stuff the most powerful sacrifices that you can make, and I've mentioned this before, is releasing those things that were keeping you from evolving. They could be releasing and sacrificing your belief systems, releasing people in your life, even though you love them in a way, um, but if it's a toxic situation and it's keeping you um, from evolving, that's a sacrifice. You let it go in the name of your um, evolvement and those are the sacrifices that the universe is looking for that the the kind of like human ego attachments that you have sometimes it can be material things I've had those stripped away from me 
And of course I was in victim mentality about that. But it it is always releasing things that no longer serve you. That is the biggest sacrifice that you can make. So you don't have to go around being bloody and, and doing things <laughs> like, you know, the distorted witchcraft or sacrifices in the past. Those no longer work either, those types of sacrifices. When you do those things, when you leave a toxic situation or um, you sacrifice, you know, your spending habits and, and you go without sometimes, um, that shows the universe that you're serious. You're willing to do what it takes. Um, when you develop self-discipline, that is a sacrifice. That not just like flying off and, and doing um, things that don't benefit yourself or others. And you, you rein that in and you have some self-discipline. That's a sacrifice. Giving up addictions. That's a huge sacrifice. The universe will pay attention. So those are the kind of sacrifices that are the most powerful. And then the last one that I'm going to talk about is, is um, patience. This was the hardest one for me. Um, sometimes these spells or intentions we put out take a long time. Now, I've had some where I spoke something and within 24 hours it happened. And I look back and I said, how did that happen? It was... I was totally detached from it. After I said it, I didn't think about it again. There was no emotional attachment to it. Um, if there's emotional attachment and all that, it will take longer, I've noticed. So, um, and they weren't anything like huge. They were just like, that would be nice to have. And I swear, and I didn't think about it again. And then within 24 hours, it was there in front of me. So. Again, the more attachment you have to things, the longer it's going to take. So that's why it's part, it's really important to detach and to learn to have patience. And that is that trust thing going back. That has been the hardest thing for me is, is patience. But it does eventually, if you stay in alignment and stay ethical and stay true to yourself, um, you know, maintain your environment and all that it eventually will manifest. But you have to stay out of victim mentality. That is the most important, and that is why I talked about it in the beginning of this video. You cannot attract anything you want if you're in victim mentality. You get, it's, it's, that, that energy is against um, manifestation. It keeps you unable to manifest anything except more victimhood. I hope that helps you. Again, spell casting is nothing complicated. The more simple that, that you can do it, create a ritual, light a candle, burn some incense. Um, just be very clear about what it is that you want the universe to help you with. And again, you can't manipulate or say, have this person do that or put a love spell on somebody to make them love you. That's manipulation. That's your ego. Ask, what can you do? Can you get some assistance on how I can have more love in my life? And don't attach it to any specific person. Um, and when, when you keep it like that, when you don't try to manipulate other people or mani manipulate the situation, just ask to be shown what you can do to change the situation. That is the most powerful. And then you have to pay attention to the signs because there's signs everywhere. It'll come through animals, coincidences. You'll hear the same thing repeated again and again. I've opened magazines and it's always been like the same town. Um, and then when I went there, you know, you just, it's like breadcrumbs, you know, that they give you and they're in a different, we're in different dimensions. So that's the best that they can do. Um, and then my fetch came, I have interactions with other beings as soon as I started to really pay attention and crawled out of the victim mentality that us humans seem to default into. Um, you vibrate into that higher vibration where these beings are that can help you. So it's super important to get out of victim mentality if you want to become 
a powerful spellcaster um, or sorcerer, shaman, witch, whatever you want to call it. It's super important. So when you are in a situation next and you go into that, start crying and poor me, look, take a snapshot of that, that um, slide I gave and see where you are and then go, okay, I'm playing victim, I'm in victim and try to get over to the virtues of what's in the leadership um, category. And once you do that, you kind of get out really fast. And I actually laugh at myself sometimes now because I, I realize, you know, I slipped into that default victim mentality. So once you realize it, it's easier to get out every time and then it'll become second nature to not go into it. You may go into it a couple seconds and recognize what you're doing and then get out of it. Okay, so that is it for today and I will see you on the next video.